Maurizio Pochettino's second USMNT roster will happen in November for the USMNT camp where we will face Jamaica in a two-leg series home and away in order to make it to the Nations League semi-finals in March. Now, Pochettino's first camp, he did okay. He got one win at home against Panama and then lost to Mexico away, albeit with a very depleted roster. And I'm going to predict what roster of 23 he's going to take to November camp. What up, guys? I'm Pete Douthit, host of the 11 Yank Show. We talk about everything in the American soccer landscape, particularly men's soccer. Smash the like button if you know the channel. And if you haven't already, don't forget to smash subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Now, before we talk about the roster, let's do a quick injury update. We had something like 18 to 20 players injured for that last game against Mexico. And thankfully, a lot of them, especially a lot of the key players, have come back. Marlon Fossey, Cameron Carter-Vickers, Tyler Adams, Johnny Cardoso, Weston McKinney, Timothy Weah, and Ricardo Pepe have all returned from injury. The guys that are still injured are Serginho Dest, Chris Richards, Luca Della Torre, Giovanni Reina, Folarin Balogun, and Caleb Wiley. Now, Folarin Balogun is touch and go. He participated in the early part of training with the first team but he wasn't able to do any shoulder work because of his dislocated shoulder. Now, originally he was supposed to be out until December. Will he make it back in time for games on June 14th and June 18th? It's possible, but I'm not sure. Uh, a couple of days ago, he did a little bit of training. So we're just going to have to monitor that situation and see how it is going forward. But for the sake of this roster, I have predicted a roster without Fuller and Balogun, which I hope he's there because we are going to need him. And I also talk about who I would remove from this roster if Fuller and Balogun is there. Don't forget, guys, I still use Bet Online. Use the code BELIEVE to check it out. All right, goalkeepers is interesting because he did bring four keepers last time and he's going to have to cut one of them. It was Turner, Stefan, Schulte, and Horvath last time. And I just, I have a feeling that he's going to cut Horvath. Uh, this is pure gut instinct. Now, Zach Steffen is available or should be available rather. He's currently in the playoffs with Colorado. They are going to get knocked out by LA Galaxy. They already lost 5-0 in the first game, um, but he should be available to play. I This is really just gut instinct though. It wouldn't surprise me if Ethan Horvath was there. I think Turner and Schulte are locks. Turner because he started both games for Pochettino and is probably still our number one. And Schulte because he plays well uh, for the Columbus crew. I think it's between Stefan and Horvath for that third spot. And again, I don't have any like Pochettino data to tell me this. I just have a gut instinct that it's going to be Stefan. I guess we'll find out if I'm right. Fullbacks now. And this one really does pick itself. With Dest still being injured, it's going to be Scally and Fossey especially since Maurizio Pochettino bemoaned the fact that he wanted to start Marlon Fossey against Panama, but then he got that injury. Um, he did come back and play 84 minutes for a standard leash. So I have a feeling he will, they will be the two right backs. And then Christopher Lund and Anthony Robinson are the left backs with Caleb Wiley injured. There isn't really any meaningful competition for Lund as that backup. Who, By the way, Lund isn't even a locked-in starter for Palermo these days. So that's something to keep uh, note of. And also, he wasn't great in the last camp. But again, the lack of options is an issue. And perhaps he calls in John Token. I'm not sure. But based on the only data we have of Pochettino in this, you know, with the U.S. men's national team, the last camp, he called up Christopher Lund. So that's my guess who's going to get called up again. Really, the lack of meaningful competition in the backup fullback spots is the most worrying thing. Although it will be interesting to see if he considers Scally or Fossey his second choice right back. Maybe he prefers Fossey because he's more of an attacking fullback. Um, but Scally has been pretty dependable and reliable, especially for the USMNT and for Gladbach as well. He can also play left back in a pinch. It'll be interesting to see who he starts in competitive games. And that's really the beauty of this is that we don't really have any data on him in competitive games, and now we're finally going to get some. Center backs, and these are the four that I think he will bring. Mark McKenzie, Tim Ream, Cameron Carter-Vickers, and Austin Trusty. Now, in the last camp, Cameron Carter-Vickers was injured, so Miles Robinson came in in his stead. 
Now, Miles Robinson did not look very good against Mexico. He got his chance with McKenzie getting injured, and he was outjumped by a Huerta who is eight inches shorter than him twice, once for a shot on goal. He got ragdolled by Huerta once on the ball, um, was partially culpable on the goal that Mexico scored, the second one, and had several clearances right to the Mexico defense. So I don't think Pochettino was very impressed with Miles Robinson, and I'm guessing he's the guy that will be gone. Now you could say, hey, Tim Ream didn't look that good against Mexico either. Yes, I agree with you there. He didn't look great. And there is a case that we need to move on from Tim Ream. And you know, when Chris Richards does become available again, I have a feeling that's going to be in replacement of Tim Ream. But if you had to pick between Ream and Robinson, I think that Pochettino picks Ream for his experience and for the fact that he's a lot better on the ball than Miles Robinson is. I think that Carter Vickers and McKenzie will be the two right-footed center backs on the roster. And Austin Trusty and Tim Ream will be the two left-footed center backs. Austin Trusty, by the way, actually looking pretty good for Celtic in his last two games. So we'll see what happens. Uh, does he risk a trusty McKenzie partnership? Does he go with a McKenzie Carter Vickers partnership? One thing to keep in mind is that all three of these center backs, Reem McKenzie and Carter Vickers are not the tallest. And Jamaica does come with a very physical profile, particularly with Mikel Antonio, but not just him. A lot of their players have that very physical profile. And, I do wonder if that might play against us um, in, you know, those games. Does Trusty play against Jamaica? We're speculating because I really have no idea what Poch is going to do. And I can just see the comments. Someone's going to go, but Pete, then we should bring Miles Robinson because he's taller than all of them. Yeah, but if you're telling me that he gets out jumped by a player eight inches shorter than him twice, what is a Jamaica player going to do to him? What's a player taller than him going to do? The reality is Miles Robinson has never been USMNT quality and never will be. He is entering his prime now and there is, he has never showed me any reason to believe that he is a quality center back. So it's really time to move on from him and I really hope that Pochettino does. Midfielders now, and this is where we get our biggest boost, in my opinion, going into this camp with Tyler Adams, Johnny Cardoso, and Weston McKinney all becoming fit and available. Malik Tillman, Gianluca Busio, and Eunice Musa are the other three midfielders that I think he will bring. I think guys like Aiden Morris and Tanner Tessman, particularly Aiden Morris, will be left out. And, and Morris, because he didn't have a great showing in the last camp, and also because you know, the reason that Morris and, you know, Tessman would not be there is that Tyler Adams and Johnny Cardoso are there. And both of them would be ahead of, of uh, Tessman and Morris. So I think this is the six midfielders he brings. I don't think he brings a seventh one. I also don't think he brings Leonard Maloney. And the only reason I think that is because he didn't bring Maloney in the last camp. So with two, you know, defensive midfielders now becoming available, I don't see any reason why he would now then bring Maloney. Although... And I'm just playing devil's advocate against myself here. It's possible that he didn't really know much about the pool in his first camp and was listening to Nico Estevez. And maybe, you know, having had some time to watch the pool, he might take a look at Maloney and say, you know what, I think this guy deserves a shot, particularly because none of our midfielders really covered themselves in glory in the last camp. So you never know, right? I mean, we're, again, we're learning about Pochettino and his preferences and what he wants as we go along. So my guesses are as good as yours at this point, and they're based on just a very small sample size that was the last camp that was also hampered by so many injuries. So it really is hard to read into too much. Wide forwards, though, I think I'm pretty confident in saying it's going to be these four. Now, yes, I know Brendan Aronson is playing as a midfielder under Poch. Uh, old habits die hard. I'll probably move him out of this category for the next, when we do the actual roster video. Uh, but Pulisic, Haji, Tim Weah, and Brendan, there isn't really a ton of competition. Now, there are rumors though, there are rumors that Luke, Luca Coliosho is being courted by Pochettino. We will see. Does he make it in? Probably. If, if he decides to file a one-time switch, then yes, I imagine Coliosho will be here. And I don't think any of these four will actually move, be moved out. I think Brendan Aronson will move into midfield and maybe a guy like Gianluca Busio or maybe Malik Tillman because of just he was so poor in the last camp might be the guys he leaves at home. But as of right now, there's no confirmation on Colio show. There are reports, there are rumors, nothing concrete. So I'm 
going to play it safe here and pick these four as the wide forwards. And then the center forwards are going to be Ricardo Pepe and Josh Sargent, I think. Is there a chance that Balogun is healthy? I honestly don't know. Uh, it's, it's tricky. He could be. He could be. How healthy is he? He'd have to at least get minutes for Monaco, I think, before... Uh, getting called up. There are a few games left. Remember, the first game is not until the 14th, but the roster will probably get released sometime next week. So if he isn't back in full training, I doubt he's going to call Balogun in. I'm going to, again, play it safe here with Ricardo Pepe and Josh Sargent. Some people might say, well, what about Brandon Vasquez? Yes, Vasquez actually looked pretty good for the 20 minutes that he came on against Mexico. Is that enough to deter Pochettino and to maybe send Josh, like leave Josh Sargent out in favor of Vasquez? Again, guys, I don't know. We, we don't have data. So I'm, I'm going to say no, just because I don't think that Pochettino is a reactionary guy that he's going to make that call on 20 minutes of play. But maybe, you know, Josh Sargent was poor in those two games. And so if he doesn't get called up in the next camp, it's going to be hard to have a ton of sympathy for him. Like, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you're doing for your club if you come to the national team and you stink it up. Um, we'll see how much Pochettino holds that camp against him and, you know, what he does going forward. But I'm going to guess Ricardo Pepe and Josh Sargent for strikers. All right, guys, that is my prediction of who I think makes the November roster. Let me know in the comments who you think makes the roster. Is there anybody here that I left out that you think will be there? Is there anybody that I have included here that you're like, there's no way Potch is bringing him? Let me know what you think. Smash the like button before you go. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.